Okay, he agreed. I pulled my bike out of the rack and leapt into the saddle. Let's ride. The area where I grew up is now simply part of Toronto, but when I was a boy it was a separate entity. It lay a few miles to the north of the downtown core and was separated by wide tracts of undeveloped land. Lit City Toronto Stories is a three-month citywide celebration of literary Toronto. It commemorates writers who find inspiration in Toronto and use the city as a setting in their work. The series culminated at the 10th anniversary of Doors Open Toronto. Author, musician, and filmmaker Paul Corrington read an excerpt from his novel The Ravine at the Todd Morden Mills Heritage Museum and Art Centre, followed by a walk in the Don Valley. It lay on top of his head like tangled bed sheets, and no doubt contributed heavily to his air of bitterness, which was obvious. The boy's face was twisted with bitterness. Unfortunately, given that his face was none too pleasant to begin with. And to top things off, to jack up the bitterness levels, he had acne quite severely. It looked as though pimples were battling whiteheads for possession of his very soul. <laughs> the valley is a perfect stand-in for the pivotal dramatic event in Corrington's tale. His semi-autobiographical character, Phil McQuig, is set upon by thugs at a pond just like this one, an event that puts him on a life course for the worse. In the morning. <laughs> you told me that your children are coming to stay with you tomorrow. Wouldn't it be wise to get a little sleep? <laughs> well, it sure would be, Norman. I have to pick them up at 7.30. Well, so then. Okay, you're probably right. Probably. You, uh, you're a nice guy, Norman Kitchen. Well, so you say. Every time you telephone. <laughs> well, good night, then. Good night, Philip and sweet dreams. <laughs> the Ravine is available in stores and online. Paul's books, music recordings, and films are featured on his website, paulcorrington.org. When I was young, I used to lie awake When the rest of the family was asleep And I would listen through the open window To a train whistle blowing sweet